Hey guys, I'm Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's chat because I'm going to share with you my testimony. I was born and I was born into a home of wonderful, wonderful parents. Um, my parents were both news anchors turned realtors, uh, turned entrepreneurs. So I grew, grew up in an entrepreneurial home. Um, but my parents didn't really raise me in the faith. So I know a lot of you, you were raised going to Bible school, reading Bible verses all the time. And that was not my story. They treated me so well with so much love, but just did not raise me to no scripture or to really know God. And um, I know some of you are in that same boat where you just weren't raised in it, where it seems like everyone around you was. And I wasn't either. Um, so I would go to Catholic church like two times a year. And it was, it just was what it, I would like go to the bathroom to wash my hands because I got so bored during the service. I know some of y'all might be Catholics, but I just would get so bored. So I didn't really know God at all. I didn't know why I was created. I didn't really know my purpose. And so naturally, because I didn't know God, I looked for my worth and my purpose in other things. And growing up, that looked like just achieving a lot. So I was in a lot of sports. I, Toby just came into the door. <laughs> if you don't know Toby, he's my dog. You'll become very acquainted with him as you watch these videos. So I just started to find my identity in achieving and how other people saw me. So growing up, I would just try to achieve. I would try to be seen. I would try to be noticed. And I thought that if I could get people to notice me and if I could get people to like me, then that was success. So over time, over the years that went by, that just got into me basically being a chameleon. So I would just try to be whoever the person I was with needed me to be. So if I needed a, it, this like gift that God had given me of being able to relate to people was now being misconstrued and for me to manipulate people to like me. That's really what I was doing. So I would just change my personality depending on who I was with um, it, to get people to like me. And here's the crazy thing. It worked. Like people did like me. They started to like me. And so again, this puff up, this pride was just stirring up in me where I was finding my worth in how other people saw me. Now in middle school and early high school, I was struggling with friends. I was struggling with knowing who my friends were and feeling included. Um, I would often feel very excluded. And I think that was just I just felt that way. Middle school is tough. And to get through that, I would be a chameleon. I would just say, okay, who do I need to be today to be included, to be in the popular group, like whatever we think about. Um, that got to a point where I started to just do things that weren't maybe the best things to do, but just the popular, just what was popular. So I would, you know, I was partying and that's you know we're we're gonna get into the whole shebang today but in high school just not you know I was not always I just wasn't making wise decisions because that's what you did when you were in high school and you wanted to be like in the in group right so I did that and all the while I was thinking this isn't really me like the more that I was finding my worth and maybe how guys saw me and the more that I was going to all these parties, deep down, the person that I was pretending to be, I knew I wasn't that person. Like deep down, I knew. I was even starting to be mean to people because I knew that that's like what you could do to be popular. I knew it wasn't me though. And I remember having a day where I felt this, this tug between the person that I wanted to be and be who I was pretending to be and the person that I really was deep down, like the person that God had created me to be. And I was feeling this, this just tug of war between the two. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. Perhaps I can't make myself be whoever I want to be. Perhaps I am, this is so philosophical, but I was just having these thoughts where I was like, perhaps I am a personality. Perhaps I was created individually and God, like not God, perhaps I was created 
not to change, but with a specific purpose, with a specific personality, like perhaps that was there because I knew that who I was deep down was not who I was pretending to be. So like deep down, I didn't like listening to the music that I was listening to. I loved like Coldplay, but I wasn't listening to Coldplay because I wanted to be cool and listen to all the cool music or Deep down, I knew I loved writing and I loved words. I loved words, but I stopped writing because you weren't, if you were writing stories and writing, you weren't cool. Like deep, deep down, I knew these things and that perhaps I was created. Like perhaps I had a specific purpose if I couldn't chameleon it up and I couldn't pretend to be something. Perhaps some, someone was there. So then I got to think about, okay, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And since I didn't know God, I started to look into the spiritual realm. So I would, there was this book like The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I started reading that book and I had no idea what it meant. It was so over my head. I'm like, all right, this isn't working. But I just started searching for my purpose. Like, what is my purpose? Who am I? If I can't be something I'm not, who really am I? It got to the point where, um, I just, I don't know what spurred this, but I Googled Jesus. Oh no, I'll tell you what happened. So I'm in this like search, this, this purpose search, right? Looking in like Buddhism and all just searching, searching, seeking. And I remember scrolling on Instagram and there was this girl who was always so happy and so confident. And she just, I knew she was so confident in her skin and she would always talk about Jesus in her captions. And I remember scrolling and being like, okay, who's Jesus? Like maybe my purpose isn't Jesus. So then I Google search Jesus. And if you know the book that I've written about this, it's about a beginner's guide to faith by someone who wants Google Jesus. I literally Googled Jesus. And this weird page came up with just this, these italic letters and I was really lost. Again, just lost, reading Power of Now, lost, reading this website that I think was the Lord's Prayer, looking back on it, like inviting Jesus into your heart. And I was so confused. I'm like, all right, you know what? Maybe Jesus isn't for me. So close out of that. Then a couple of days later, one of my best friends growing up, like she was my best friend in preschool, like growing up. And she was over at my house. We were sitting at the back on the back porch and she said, Hey, uh, it was after school. She said, Hey, I got to go. Uh, I have a, a book club that I'm going to. I was like, Oh, that's so cool. What's the book that you're reading? And she said, it's called the purpose driven life. And I said, okay, I want to read that book. Like what's it about? It sounds cool. She said, it's a book about finding your purpose. And I'm thinking, this is the book I need. So she said that she would get it for me. She ended up getting it for me and it changed my life, changed my life. The very first page says, this book is not about you. It is all about God. So that book introduced me to Jesus, that book. I would read it every morning before school. Like, I would sit at the breakfast table with my family who thought I was crazy and I would read day four, day 30, and I would just read my, with my breakfast there right before high school. And I fell in love with Jesus. Did I know the Bible? No, I did not know the Bible. Did I, was I still partying? Yes, absolutely. But I, God was taking, he was introducing himself to me. And I could cry just thinking about it. You know, he finds us when we're lost and when we're broken, not when we're perfect. So here he was finding me. I'm I'm reading this book. I'm obsessed with this book. This book was my Bible, basically. But then I got into a serious relationship. So I dated this guy for four years. He was like my first love. And um, I'm getting too far into the story. But anyway, I started dating this guy and I still was, I still was a Christian. I, I was going to young life, but I was just kind of like half in half out. I was very lukewarm. I was, you know, reading my purpose driven life book and watching sermons online, but like in the background and in my actual life, I wasn't actually 
following God's word or what God's word said. I actually wasn't even reading God's word. You know, I was just a Christian. Um, and so, but God is so patient with us. And so anyway, I then get to school, I get to college, I went to Miami University, and I was thriving, having the best time of my life, um, but still just living a lukewarm life. Like I was just half in, half out, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty comfortable. My worth was in my boyfriend. And I also had a very comfortable life. You know, my family was so supportive. And here I was in this great sorority. And like, life was great life was great. I didn't really need to be like this lukewarm thing was kind of working for me. It was <laughs> this coffee, like it's kind of lukewarm. It's not working for me, but that's gets into it. We're getting a little too far into the story, but it was working until junior year winter, my boyfriend and I broke up. A month later, my parents got a divorce. That happened within a month. Then my grandma passed away. It was like, you know, those days or, or those times in your life where it feels like everything falls apart. It was an everything falls apart kind of thing. So, um, since I had lost these two areas of my life that I had built such a foundation on, I had built such of like my worth and purpose in these areas. I still was a Christian, mind you, but my life fell apart. And I was very upset with God. So I'd love to tell you right now that I ran to God and I was like, God, we're going to get through this together. But I actually ran away from God because I was so upset that he allowed those two things to happen at the same time. I was so upset. I did not understand how a good God could allow this man that I was in love with, thought I was going to marry. We were, we broke up and, and then to my, my parents who was also a pillar of love broke up. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like the, the timing of this is wild and a good God would never do that. So I just kind of ran away, went the complete opposite end. And again, started just doing college things and started finding my worth in the world again, finding my worth in guys, finding my worth in the party scene, finding my worth and, you know, just like doing the things that the world says that you should do to cope with things basically. And deep down, I was just, I was so lost. I was so hurt. I was so upset nothing made sense. Nothing made sense. It was a year, a literal year of me doing that. A year fam. Like I look back on it with some of my friends. They're like, we didn't even recognize you that year. I was just so lost, so broken and I'm still broken, but like I, it was a really rough time. It got to a point where a year later, I just remember I was back at home for winter break and I had tried the world's way to cope with things. I had tried the party scene. I had tried finding my worth in what guys thought of me. I had tried that way. And here I was, I remember sitting in my childhood bedroom over winter break a year later and I was so depressed. I couldn't even get out of bed. The, I remember the window, I remember this clear as day, the window curtains were shut and I just couldn't get out of bed. And I remember, I just felt like I couldn't keep living the way that I was living. And I remember just in that moment, in the darkness, in the hopelessness, I just felt God, I felt him in the room with me, just being like, you're going to heal this time, but you're going to heal with me. And I was like, you're right. You're right. I mean, that's not how I responded. In that time, I broke down. I just broke down because I felt his presence with me saying, I love you so much. And I hate that you're hurting, but I want you to heal, but heal with me. And so 
I just broke down and felt the love of the Lord. And in my sin, that's where he met me. In my brokenness, that's where he met me. I was so broken sitting there, just, you know, coming back to him, falling away, coming back to him, falling away. And here he was like, I love you still. And I'm still holding out my hand to you. And I still love you. I'm here. He doesn't he doesn't leave us in our sin. He actually invites us to a relationship with him. The more, the more that sin increases, grace abounds all the more. So he met me in my sin and in my shame. He met me there, not in my perfection. So I literally, guys, I got back to school and that for, cause it was winter break. I got back to school and I cut it all out. I cut out all the partying. I cut out these just relationships with guys that were not good. And I just cut it out. Um, and I woke up every morning at like 6am would read my Bible and go to the gym. And I just did that again and again. And I was not, I just was, I X'd out all these things and I became obsessed with knowing God more. Um, then COVID hit and all the people, we were seniors in college and it was basically like, all right, you could leave campus and um, come back for graduation. So I literally left school at that point. God kind of got me out of the environment that I had like been destructive in. He just plucked me out of it, put me in my childhood bedroom again, where I stayed for a whole year, fam. I was literally like in my childhood bedroom because I didn't have a job lined up after school. I was, I literally just every day, well, first, okay, first let's start with this. I started going to therapy and that was really, really helpful. Um, I started to just like go to therapy to uncover some wounds. And it was also, I feel like I'm moving too fast. There's so much that happened. So I came back from school, it's COVID and the world has shut down. And I had this mentor who was kind of coaching me. She was like my nutrition coach, but also she was coaching me in the Bible. She was just a mentor for me in that time, helping me read scripture every day. And I fell in love with scripture. And it was during this time, you guys, that I was also really struggling with fear. So it's crazy how when we go all in with God, um, the enemy can attack us even more. So it was at that time that I was just really struggling with ruminations and intrusive thoughts. So there would be days where like all I would do was ruminate on food. And I would just think about food all the time. And I was kind of developing an unhealthy relationship with food. Um, but just thinking about it all the time. And then it would just hop. Like it was a frog just hopping. My ruminations would hop and it was just awful. There would be days where I was like, I don't even know what's true. And it was so scary, just fear, just crippling fear. And I remember I talked to my mentor about it and then I just started going to therapy to just uncover where all this fear was coming from. And I actually, in this time, as I was getting to know God's word more, as I was staying at home, there was so much happening. I was working on, I was, God was like blessing my online space in just crazy ways. And here I was, and here I was just uncovering this fear. And I got diagnosed with OCD. I was like, oh my gosh. And so basically OCD is where you just obsess about things. And so what the therapist was saying is that I was just, or the psychiatrist, I ended up going to a psychiatrist and just was telling me that I had OCD, that I would just, this rumination and this obsessive worry over one thing that would jump from one thing to the next, it, it was OCD. That gave me a lot of comfort. It also was sad because it's like okay so what do I do I just like have this and um it was really bad there would be days where I just would wake up and the first thing I would think was like a certain fear or it was just it was terrible and it would wouldn't leave my head it was these intrusive thoughts that were from the literal devil you guys so 
the psychiatrist diagnosed me with that. I got put on OCD medication and was going to therapy still. And the medication was good for a season, but over time, anyway, I won't get into that right now, but I was basically just healing from this OCD thing. And just, um, I was also reading God's word a lot. And so that's when I started creating those battle cards, which all battle cards are. I don't know if I have one here, but um, all they are are just these cards where I would write a scripture on one side and a prayer on the back. And I would literally just use these all day to battle against these fears that I was struggling with and these like attacks on my mind. And it was crazy. Like I would find that that was working. Me speaking scripture out loud and, and saying a prayer out loud over these fears, it was actually making the fear go away. Like it would be out of my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. So I just started doing them more and more, started posting about them, just falling in love with God's word and the power of God's word. Like when you experience this for yourself, if you're struggling with anything mental health related or anything, when you experience the power of God's word and his author Jesus's authority over these things, you'll never look at the Bible the same. I will never look at the Bible ever again the same after my experience with it with fear. So I would speak these scriptures out loud and my fear would just go away. It would just disintegrate. It, and before it was it was there and then the minute I would say scripture, it would just disintegrate. And it was, it was an attack of the enemy. The enemy was attacking my mind. Um, but God, he, he was so, he was showing me his power. Um, so in that time I had, I'm still going to therapy. I'm using God's word. I'm practicing, just meditating on scripture all day with all these thoughts rolling around in this fear. Um, and it got to that. I'm still living at home with my mom. I'm still working on the honey scoop. And I had a couple side social media management gigs but I was working on the honey scoop. My life was so simple. I would go down the street and here I was post-grad, supposed to be living my best life. And here I was, I would walk down the street and I would see kids from just little kids. And I would walk around my elementary school. I was so close to just, I, I did not think that I would be in that place after graduating, but here I was in that place in my childhood bedroom, like not really knowing what I was doing, where I was going. So I just started to surrender. And the more that I would surrender and the more that I would get in God's word, like I would just surrender. I got to a point, I didn't know if I was gonna stay in Columbus, Ohio and get an apartment or if I was going to move somewhere to Chicago or something. And I just remember I got to this point where I said, Lord, you know I'm not gonna be able to stay with my mom, living with my mom all my life. So please open a door for me to move somewhere. I don't care where it is. It is your decision. It is up to you. I, I ask you to decide for me. So I gave it up to him. I literally let go of trying to figure out my life and I gave it up to him. It was then that I went on a trip with my brother to Miami, Florida. And I remember God putting on my heart, Nashville. I was like, oh my gosh. So you know, when we think, we, we, we wonder if it's God or we're just like, was that God? Was it? We just kind of, I let it go, but I prayed into it. I said, Lord, if you want me to go to Nashville, okay, how are you going to do that? So then a couple people had DM'd me from Nashville in that time on the Honey Scoop. The Honey Scoop, meanwhile, is doing really well. Mind you, I had been doing the Honey Scoop. I'd been posting about the Lord and in writing, writing about the Lord and just writing encouraging words for like three years up to this point fam and there was no traction and then all of a sudden god is just blessing it so meanwhile honey scoop is doing well and he's god is blessing these posts and they're reaching people and um my i like made this friend through a dm on there and she was from nashville and i'm like mom this is crazy i went up to my mom i'm like mom this is crazy i'm all these doors are opening up to nashville and she said, well, that's crazy because I'm flipping a house there. My mom does real estate and she fixes up homes. She's like, I'm flipping a house there and you could stay there. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, because I, I had known that, but we just didn't really talk about it. She said, you could stay there for free and see if you like it. I'm like, 
So here I was, I told my best friend, Kelsey, I'm like, I think God perhaps wants me to move to Nashville. And she said, okay, you're going to move in a month. It was February 13th when she said that. March 13th, I was driving down with my dad in the car to Nashville to this literal construction zone, fixer upper. We had to put up duct tape and like this, this fake curtain for me to even like change in my room. Like it was so, it was ratchet, but it was just such an adventure. So I moved to Nashville. I'm not knowing what I'm going to do for a job. I end up getting a job um, in social media management for this wonderful, wonderful woman named Allie. And she's a teacher and she's a Bible teacher. She's an author. I ended up just working as a right-hand woman um, for her, just her social media. And God provided that. So he provided the income. He provided a place to live. And then he provided all these friends. And I can go into this more in another time, just my experience in Nashville, but he just provided. Like when I let go, God provided more. And it was around six, it was around like four months after that, I'm still on OCD medication. And I felt like God was stirring my heart to fast and pray about him completely delivering me from OCD and from these fears. Cause I was still struggling with fear and thoughts and like the medication now in a season where it felt really great and like it was a blessing, it was now becoming something where I felt it was numbing me. And this is just where, how I felt. I just felt like it was like numbing my joy. Like it was, it was numbing my fear, but it was also numbing my joy. So I'm like, and, and I just kept feeling like God was a healer. He could heal me. So I just started to fast and pray. We had 21 days of prayer and fasting at our church. And I just started to fast and pray over my OCD and just that God would completely deliver me. And what is so crazy, you guys, I feel like he has healed me because I, after I prayed and fasted and prayed over it, it wasn't like an immediate thing. It was like, I woke up and I was like, I don't need I feel like the fears are gone, but I remember just over time, the fear just leaving or like when the fears would come and the thoughts would come, I would just attack it with scripture and it was just gone. And it wasn't this huge thing where it would just disrupt my whole day. It, it didn't have power over me anymore. So at one point it had power. I was in bondage. I was like a slave to this. There would be days where I felt like my mind was in a jail cell, but now it was like I had power. I had authority over them. Even the, the thoughts would come and there was authority. There wasn't like this, oh, I'm just a slave to this. It was like, no, 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 power, gone. Like the thought would be gone. And so I felt just one day I was worshiping at church and I felt the Lord be like, it's time to get off medication. And this is just my own story. I don't want, if any of y'all are on medication, I don't want you to feel like you have to get off because of this, but I just felt the Lord give me the faith to say it's time to get off. So I got off my medication and I was like, okay, Lord, I trust you. And if you want me to get back on it, like just please give me the wisdom to do so. And this, again, this is just my story and I'm sharing it with you, but I just felt that. And so I ended up getting off of it and I have not been on it since. And like, it's crazy what the Lord has done. The days that I woke up every single day with fear in my mind and with ruminations, I literally don't have that anymore. That is God. That is not me. That's God. That's his ability to heal. He can heal our minds, you guys. He can heal anything. He can heal our hearts, our broken hearts. He can heal our minds. He can heal our relationships that we have with ourselves. Like he can heal it all. And so now I just felt like, I mean, it's been a year after I fasted for that. And I'm still just can say and testify to his goodness in his his glory and it says in scripture that you will conquer the blood of the lamb by the um by the word of your testimony um or you will con you will conquer the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony so jesus's blood and our testimony is what actually defeats satan 
And so if you resonate with my story, like if you feel like you, I mean, if you resonate with, with divorce or heartbreak and you just feel like your, your life's a mess right now, guess what? I felt that way too. If you um, are struggling with mental health, anxiety, OCD, depression, guess what? I struggled with that too. Um, if you are just feel like you're just so broken and so messy and you can't begin again and you feel like you keep making mistakes, guess what? I feel like that and have felt that way too. Like we all feel like that and you're not too far gone for God to meet you here today and for him to just speak to you. He can do immeasurably more than all we can ask, think, or imagine. There's no way I should be talking to you right now about this. There's no way that by my own strength and by my own power, I should be able to testify to his goodness right now. But like because of him, he has he has done it all. He has done it all. He has provided everything. He's provided for this ministry. He has provided for um, my mind, like the healing of my mind, guys. He's provided for um, the healing of my heart. And there are still things that I'm waiting for. And guess what? Our testimonies are never done. So this is just my testimony up until now, but I know God is going to continue to work his will in my life. And I want to just be able to speak it as much as he, as much as I'm alive. Like I just want to continue to speak and declare of his goodness. If you resonate with my story and you don't know Jesus, I just want to invite you right now as we're watching this this video, like whoever you are, if you resonated with this, I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus because I'm not special. Like there's nothing crazy. It's just a surrender and to the Lord. And it's the love of God that changes us, his love will never leave you the same. No matter how you feel today, no matter how messy or broken or too far gone you feel, his love will not leave you the same. It will rescue you and it will deliver you from the enemy and from the world um, and from darkness. He wants to do that. He wants to just invite you into his light. So I want to invite you to just every head, every head bowed right now. We're just going to pray. Um, Father God, I just want to pray for the person who is watching this right now, God. I thank you that you led them to this video, Lord. And um, God, we just believe right now, God, that you, um, well, first we confess our sin, God. We confess that we need you, God. We are imperfect and we need you. And also I encourage you to say all this with me. So God, I confess my sin. I need you. I am broken. I am a sinner in need of a savior. And then you can say this too with me. God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins and that he is my access, my direct access to God, to a relationship with you, Father. So say that with me. You can rewind. <laughs> and then... um God say, we're, we're going to say, God, I ask that you would come into my heart. I surrender my life to you. I receive your son, Jesus, today. And I choose to live with you. God, help me to live today for you and help me to know you more. In Jesus name, amen. I'm so proud of you. We literally just did that together. If you just prayed that prayer, please comment below. I don't think I've ever done that done that on here, but I just felt like as I'm sharing my story, man, the devil is upset because this is how he is conquered is when we share our testimonies and when we invite people into this love of God that we have experienced. He has not left me the same and he will not leave you the same no matter where you are at today. He is with you and he is for you. And I'm so, just if you prayed that prayer, I'm so excited. Heaven is cheering. And I know this wasn't a typical YouTube video, but we needed to go there. We needed to go there today. So let me know in the comments um, just what you related to in this or if you... If you said that prayer out loud, like I want to know who did that.
here. And um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to grow your faith and you want to reach your full potential in the Lord this year. I'd love to have you a part of our community.